Scalar UDFs are death traps. If you're working with SQL Server for some time now, you probably already know this. But if you're new to SQL Server, you will know this after the demo. Today's tutorial and today's demo is just not about me showing you that Scalar UDFs are very bad for your workloads and queries, but I'm also going to take a step forward and talk about the feature which is from SQL Server 2019 onwards and it is called as automatic inlining of Scalar UDFs. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm also going to discuss a few limitations and caveats that will prevent your query from leveraging this feature. So, you know, the overall package of Scalar UDF inlining, etc. may sound very nice, but uh, the uh, the story is not as honky dory as it may seem to be. So you got to look at the complete picture in totality. Now, first things first, what are scalar UDFs? Some basic. We want to write complex business logic and we want it to be reused. So what we do is as developers or DBAs, we would write functions. We would write T-SQL functions and put our logic into those functions and then plug in those functions in our select statements. Now, when the query is calling those functions, it gets called for each row that is being output by the query. So let's say if your select statement is dealing with a million rows, this function is going to be called a million times. And as the name says, scalar UDF functions, a scalar user defined function, which is, it is on each execution, it is returning or in on each call, it is returning a singleton value. And that's why when it's being called so many times, it really hurts the performance and increases the overall execution time. You know, it can really bring down your query to it, its knees. And I've seen workloads which probably would have run in a few seconds take minutes to execute overall. That's about scalar UDF. And then the next part too is, uh, is the automatic inlining of Scalar UDF, the feature which is from SQL Server 2019 onwards. This feature, automatic inlining, will only work if you are running SQL Server version 2019 and beyond, but any other version prior to SQL Server 2019, like let's say 17 or 16 or 14 or 12, you will not be able to leverage this feature, obviously. But there are a few limitations and, and, and few catches. That's what we are going to see. So let's jump straight away into the demo, Scalar UDF debt trap, and let's put the complete picture in perspective. We are using AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. We're dealing with two tables here, the transactions table and the big product table. Transactions table has a few million records and the big product table has a few thousand records. There is a filter on actual cost and we are ordering the data by product name descending. Let's go and execute this query, a very straightforward query with an inner join, a where clause and an order by clause. There are two things that you will observe here. First is the overall execution time of the query of the workload. And we will look into the execution plan to figure out that this is a parallel execution. So let's first jump over to the execution time and you will see that it takes about 12 seconds for the overall execution. Jump over to the execution plan and you can see that this is a parallel plan. You can clearly see a lot of parallel operators out there, straightforward stuff. Let's jump over to the results and look at this name. Now, for whatever reason, the business users want some kind of casing with this data, with this particular product name. They want the first letter of each word to be capital. So when you see this, these bikes here, AdventureWorks, the fictitious company is a bicycle manufacturing company. So Touring 2000 Blue. So they want that T should be capital and here, T should be capital and here B should be capital, right? The first letter should be caps. So there is a user defined function here that I've written by the name of Pascal casing. Okay, so Pascal case is the name of the function which is going to be called for each record. And now let's go and execute this UDF, right? Or this statement and the UDF is going to be called now. And now with this execution, you will notice that the execution time will increase. 
Sometimes it's uh, minimal, sometimes it's a lot more. That all really depends on the dynamic behavior of SQL Server. And you will also observe in the execution plan that parallelism goes away. And that's one of the biggest drawbacks of Scalar UDFs, of course, that it hurts the execution performance, but also that it forces serial execution. So first things first, oh, the overall execution has gone almost double, right? So we executed the previous version of the query without the UDF in about 12 seconds. And now this has taken 26 seconds. So this is like 100% increase in the execution time. The function did its job by the way, okay? So you can see T caps here and B caps here. Okay, all good. Let's jump over to the execution plan now. And in the execution plan, you can see that this is a serial plan. This was a serial execution, no parallel operators. Now this could be very bad for your SQL Server because parallelism in general is good. You want your workloads and queries to use all the processes, the resources that are out there. Uh, but uh, by the virtue of the limitations of scalar UDFs, uh, it forces serial execution. So if you take the cursor over the select operator here and let's go and jump to the properties, um, somewhere here you could see non-parallel plan reason and it says could not generate valid parallel plan. So these are all the challenges, the drawbacks, uh, and the bad things about scalar UDFs. And I was really nice here by running a query which took like from 12 seconds to 26 seconds, but I said in reality, and probably you have seen this happening, is your workloads could take minutes to execute just because of a bad UDF getting injected. Okay, now let's talk. Uh, come to the second part of the story, the automatic inlining you know what, automatic inline should have happened by now, right? Because when I ran this one, oh, I didn't show you that this is SQL Server 2019, right? That's what you're wondering that, okay, you know, friends, this is running on SQL Server 2019, compact level, compatibility level 150. So automatic inlining should have happened. And that's the feature. So let's go and do something. So let's go to AdventureWorks 2016, jump over to the properties. Let me first show this to you. I can also do select at the rate, at the rate version and whatnot. But anyway, this is good enough. So if you jump over to options and check the compatibility settings of this database, SQL um, AdventureWorks 2016. Why is this so slow? This should, ah, some scalar UDF running behind this dialog box or what? Okay, compatibility level, SQL Server, 2019, you could see that. So this is the default uh, for all the databases that I have here. So this is running in SQL Server 2019, which is, or which means automatic inlining of UDFs should have happened. And here is the catch. There is a long list of requirements before your UDF could be automatically inlined. But before I jump to that, let's first understand what do you really mean by automatic inlining of scalar UDFs. With this feature from SQL Server 2019 onwards, your scalar UDF is transformed into a scalar expression or a scalar subquery and is substituted in the calling query. After it gets substituted into the calling query and then the optimizer will do all its optimization, etc. But in this specific example, you can see that there is compute scalar here and the uh, T-SQL code of your function is not being substituted here instead of the UDF operator. So this UDF operator uh, should have gone away and the, um, the so-called the plan of the function should have got injected into the main plan, which did not happen. And what's the list of all the requirements? Well, you could go to Microsoft documentation and figure it out yourself. I've just copy pasted here, inlineable scalar UDF requirements. And there is a long list of requirements here. So if you are someone who is aware of this feature from SQL Server 2019 onwards, and you are expecting that your scalar UDF should automatically get in line, but that's not happening. 
which means that it is violating some or the other requirement that is mentioned out here on this documentation. My function Pascal case does that. I won't get into the code and explaining that to you because of course there is a long list and you just got to make sure that, that you have a tick mark against each requirement out there. Another easy and quick way to find this out is in SQL modules system catalog, you have a new attribute here called is inlineable and uh, the Pascal case function has this object ID so I can search on it. So I can really figure out is inlineable zero or one. So one means that my function, which is this object ID Pascal case is inlineable. That would be value one, but value zero here means that unfortunately my function Pascal case is not inlineable. So it has to face the heat and it will be what it is uh, uh, irrespective of the version. So I will continue to get poor performance if I use the function in my select statement. Okay, so that completes the demo and the concept and all the lecture. So hope you got the idea. Scalar UDFs are bad. That's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is that despite this feature of automatic inlining of Scalar UDF, your Scalar UDF may not be inlined. So you got to go and check the requirements. The third thing which I plan to do in probably another demo is why not go and modify your scalar UDF so that you could meet the requirements and it automatically gets in line. That would be awesome. And that would probably be another demo. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this demo. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the red SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.